Welcome back, this is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos, and today we're gonna to be doing this two-tone wood look with a mica swirl base. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today down in the description box below so that you guys can shop those items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. Today I'm going to be using a 30 ounce curvy tumbler. Now before I get it painted, I'm going to go ahead and rough it up a bit with my sandpaper. Then to wipe off any little debris, I'm just going to take my rubbing alcohol and clean it up really good. Now the day that I wanted to go ahead and start this tumbler, it wasn't a very nice day out, so I decided to go ahead and use this pop of color and blush for my base color today. But if it was a little bit nicer out, Rustic Pink by Rust-Oleum would have worked as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a thin coating of my paint to my tumbler. I'm gonna let that dry really good and then we're gonna move on to that mica swirl base. For our base, we're going to apply our mica powders right into our epoxy. So I mixed up about 30 to 40 milliliters of epoxy. I divvied off just a little bit over into a little cup there. I, I think it was about five, 10 mLs into that smaller cup. That's just for my accent color. But for my main base, I wanted to use this really pretty, it's, it's kind of champagne-y. It's kind of like a tan, kind of like a nude color. And this is called Fawn. I wanted my coloring to be pretty opaque, so I went ahead and did about two scoops of my mica powder into my epoxy. If you wanted a little bit more translucent, then just add a little less. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stir up my mica powder and my epoxy mixture really well. And after I have that all mixed in really good, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our accent color. For the accent color, we're gonna be using Arlo. This is a very pretty coppery beige, almost has tones of pink in it as well. It's a very, very pretty color to go along with Fawn. And as you can see here, I'm not putting in as much because I don't have a lot of epoxy in my little cup here. So just a little bit will make it the color that I would like to. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my main base color and I'm gonna fully apply all of that epoxy right onto my tumbler. And after I have that fully applied, I'm gonna go ahead and place it onto my turner, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit it up really good with my blowtorch before I get my accent color applied. Now this next part is just very free flowing. It doesn't matter where it goes, okay? <laughs> it does not matter at all. It's, it's all going to kind of blend and melt together in the end. You just want to get this extra coloring down to kind of give us just a little bit more dimension for our base. Now usually I say how I like to work in smaller increments when it comes to my epoxy so there's no bulges or anything like that, but when it comes to applying something in this manner, if you've ever had a, a, an issue where um, after it's cured, everything, you see the mica powder kind of pulled away from the top and the bottom, that's because not enough epoxy was applied. So you wanna make sure that you have a fine line between not too much and not too little, or it might pull away from the top and the bottom, leaving clear spaces around, around those areas. But just keep playing around, mix your colors together, have fun, that's what art is all about. Now, after I get my coloring all applied here, I'm gonna go ahead and take a heating source. I like to use my blow dryer because I, I'm more looking for, I am looking for a little bit of heat, but I'm also looking for it to push these micas around really good for me as well. Now, if you guys have ever watched me do my beach tumblers, I tell you to just hit it up until everything starts to shift just a little bit. But with this, I want it to shift around a lot. I want it to have a nice swirl going completely around my tumbler. But I'm really looking for these to completely mix together and just really become what they want to become. Now, after I get done doing that, I'm gonna completely tip my tumbler right side up and I'm not going to let it drip off the edge. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it to the point where it's almost dripping off the edge and then I'm going to flip it upside down like this. So that way everything just continues to shift together and kind of even back out for myself. And obviously you didn't have to tip up your turner to do that. You could take it off your turner and do the same thing. <laughs> okay, I'm <laughs> just saying. But after I get done doing that, I'm gonna go through and pop any bubbles one last time with my, my torch here. Now I did come back through and add just a little bit more of that accent color here and there just to kind of deepen some areas up for myself. But other than that, this is pretty much good here for me. So I'm just gonna let that cure and then we're ready to move on to the next step. Now here it is after it has cured and we are ready to start applying our two-tone wood look. 
Now I don't want my wood look on the bottom, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape off my bottom. There I was showing you the line that I'm gonna be using. Sometimes you can see that that line at the bottom of your tumbler where the bottom meets the main base, so I'm just gonna use that to my advantage. Now to create that two-tone wood look that I'd like to do, I'm gonna be doing my tumbler in segments. So there'll be two lighter colored wood panels and then two darker colors. So I need to section my tumbler off into quarters. So working with my first two panels that are gonna be the light colored wood, I'm gonna go ahead and take a rubber band and I'm going to split my tumbler in half. I'm just gonna make sure that it is nice and straight because this is essentially going to be my guide so that way I can have those two wood panels lining up perfectly on both the front and the back. Now I wanted my strips to be about three inches wide so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that in half and I'm going to place my measuring tape right at the one and a half mark right over top of my rubber band and I'm gonna go ahead and mark those areas there so that way I know where to place my tape. And I'm just using an acrylic marker or you can use a dry erase marker, just something that you can wipe off when you're all done. And you're just going to tape off that area. Now I did make marks at the bottom as well, but those really weren't needed because it wasn't as straight as I wanted it to be because I was fighting with the curve of the tumbler. So I'm just gonna use the dot at the top and just make sure that my, my tape is as straight down the side of my tumbler as possible. And of course, doing the same thing on the other side, creating that first panel that we need. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the very back. So using that same exact rubber band that we guide that we made ourselves there, we are going to split three inches in half. We are gonna place our marks at the top there. We're gonna use that as a guide to apply our tape, creating that second panel around the back of our tumbler. Now before I move that rubber band, I'm gonna go ahead and block off the areas that I don't want painted just yet. So that way I don't forget what's what. So <laughs> before you remove that rubber band, go ahead and block off the two opposite sides that are gonna be the darker wood with some painter's tape and then we're ready to move on to the next step. So we're gonna be doing this peekaboo look with some hibiscus, but of course you can use any type of decals you would like. I got these right off of Creata Fabrica, and I'll make sure to put the sizes that I use down in the description box as well. I'm gonna do some smaller hibiscus in the lighter areas and the same exact hibiscus, but bigger in the darker area. So for those of you that don't know what a peekaboo is, essentially we are gonna be using this vinyl as a mask, so that way after we do the look that we want to over top, spray painting, wood look and all that, we peel that back and that mica swirl will be exposed underneath. So from here, I'm just gonna take these shapes that I chose and I did about three of them on each side. I tried to make them somewhat equal on each side so that way they both kind of had that same pattern to it. And I'm also going to go ahead and cut some of this away and I'm going to reuse those little pieces that I take off. So after I got my three main decals down, again, I'm just gonna take those little pieces that I cut away and just kind of fill in any little gaps that I would like to. And again, I did the same thing on the opposite side. So here I am just finishing up the opposite side as well. So now I have my two sides all ready to be spray painted. Now before I get this spray painted, I'm gonna come through and make sure that all my seams are pressed down very firmly. You wanna do this so that way none of those inks leak up underneath after everything is all said and done. But if that happens, which it did to me, I'll go ahead and I'll show you how I remove it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take it outside and spray paint it with some just basic white spray paint. I'm gonna let that dry really well and then we're ready to apply our wood look. Now starting out with my light wood look, I'm just gonna be using my trusty old two inch chip brush and just some teak wood. Now I'm gonna be doing this a little bit different than I usually do if you guys have ever watched me do my wood grains. I'm starting in the center of my tumbler with my ink first, and then I'm going to swish that ink off to each side of that area that I would like painted. The reason why I'm doing it in this fashion today is because I find it's very helpful so that way, just in case we didn't accidentally firm down, firmly press down, there we go, our tape lines, there won't be as much ink that could possibly or potentially get up underneath our tape lines and all that. So after I have it coated with my coloring, then I will come through and I will add just, just little lines of my ink here and there, giving it that wood grain look. So you see, I'm just swishing it up and down and that really starts to have that wood look be more pronounced all while trying to be cautiously not putting it right up against my tape lines. 
but I didn't speed this up because I wanted you guys to see how easy it is. Very simple. Wood grains, you know, very simple. Very, very easy to do. Now I'm just going to flip it over and do the same exact thing on the opposite side. Now I'm sure you're wondering, this looks pretty dark to you. I, I know it does, but this is actually going to lighten up quite a bit after I do my spray sealer and apply epoxy over top. So it's going to give us that nice lighter wood look. Now, for those of you that have worked with alcohol ink, it dries really fast. So you can pretty much move right into going ahead and peeling back your tape. And then you want to very carefully come through and remove all your little decals that you have inside your wood look as well. But before I do that, I'm going to show you I got some ink right up underneath the bottom here. And I'm just going to take a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol. And you want to very, very carefully, you don't want to touch your wood look with, with this. You want to just wipe away those inks that got underneath our tape. And if it stains your epoxy a little bit, just take a sanding block and very lightly just go over the surface of your epoxy and that should take care of that staining that may happen. Now here I am just going to very carefully, like I said earlier, go ahead and remove all those vinyl decals that I had laid down exposing the mica swirl underneath our design. The biggest tip I can give when removing these decals so your pen doesn't accidentally slip or whatever you're using to remove your vinyl is just go go slow. You know, take your time. You don't want to rush through this because if you accidentally nick it, then it might it could be pretty visible. Now, that didn't happen to me this time around, but if if it did happen to you, what you want to do is you just want to take a Q-tip and you just want to put some of the color of the alcohol ink that you used onto the tip of the the q-tip and just very very lightly rub over the area that got discolored from scratching and that should do the trick you just want to try to blend it as well as you can into it and trust me it'll only be visible to you okay as long as you blend it out really well but like i said this didn't happen to me this time or i would have showed you guys how i fixed that issue on screen all right, both sides are completely peeled back. We have our peekaboo exposed and we are going to apply a coat of epoxy over top of this portion of our wood look. So I went ahead and I sprayed it down with some clear sealer. This is just going to seal in my inks so that way they don't disperse under the epoxy because I didn't let it sit for very long before I moved on to the step. Or you could let it sit overnight if you want to, it's completely up to you. But I'm gonna go ahead and move on to putting about 15 milliliters of epoxy over top of this. Just a thin layer will do it so that way we can move right into our second wood look. And if you happen to be wondering why didn't I just go ahead and do the second wood look right over top, I didn't want to put the tape down over top of that wood look. Think I, I didn't want it to peel up. You know, th there's a chance it could peel up. So I didn't want to do that or I would, have, I would have done it before another coat of epoxy. So just to play it safe, another coat of epoxy over top and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, we are back. It is cured and we are ready to get going here. So I'm going to do the same exact thing like I did on the front side. I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to block off the areas that I don't want spray painted. So this time around, we are going to block off our areas that have the wood look. So now after you get your tape applied and everything all blocked off, we are going to go ahead and apply our second round of decals. Now, like I said earlier, I'm gonna be using the same exact decals, they're just bigger. So the littler ones, I think were about two and a half, these are about four. So I'm using bigger ones this time. And for the back side, instead of using three, I'm only gonna use two big ones to line each side. And because these are a bit bigger, I'm gonna put them more at an angle. And again, I'm gonna to try to line up each side kind of similar. I'm not trying to line up with the pattern of the lighter wood look that we did. That I didn't want to do that, but my purpose was to just try to make sure that each coordinating side that I did here is lined up as, as best as I can on each side. So they, they look kind of similar. And of course, anything that I cut away, just kind of reuse it by placing it here and there, filling in where I would like it to be filled in. Now, again, we're going to come through and make sure that each one of these seams is firmly pressed down so that way we don't have anything leaking on either side. Then we will go ahead and take it outside and spray paint it just like we did the first time. And after that has dried, we're ready to apply our last dark wood look. Now the inks that I'm using this time around are very pigmented colors. So I'm gonna be using two different colors for this. I also got myself a new chip brush so that way I didn't mix up my other chip brush with these colors because these are a lot darker. But again, I'm just gonna do the same thing like I did with our lighter wood grain. I'm gonna keep away from the tape line and just work my way out with this color. 
Now, I know you're like, I don't see the wood grain. Where's the wood grain? Don't panic because I did. I kind of did too. <laughs> but like I said, this is very pigmented coloring. So once you come back through with the second color and after you get your epoxy and everything put on, you can really see that wood look through it. So, so don't panic. It's just very pigmented. <laughs> So here I am coming in with that. It's it's just a shade lighter than the darker wood that I used. You'll see me come through with it and it kind of starts, you can kind of start to see that, that wood look kind of poking through with it. But it kind of reminded me of like dark walnut or, or something like that. Just a, a very dark wood. I don't know. Any Anybody out there that, that knows their, their wood? I don't know. <laughs> something like a walnut, I think. Anyways. <laughs> Now, after you have that applied, you're just going to come through just like the first side and you're going to go ahead and remove your tape lines. And you're going to very carefully pull back your vinyl decals, exposing that peekaboo. And of course, anything that might have leaked underneath, you're going to do the same thing where you wipe it away right away. And if it stained your epoxy, give it just a very light sanding to remove that stained look. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat of epoxy over top of this yet again. I'm gonna go ahead and spray it down with my spray sealer, apply another thin coating of epoxy over top, and then I'll be ready to add my finishing decals. After that has cured, I'm gonna go ahead and come through and trim up my rim really well. I'm also gonna sand my rim down. It doesn't really need too much sanding after that, just around up around the rim is all you wanna do, making a nice line for ourselves, a nice thin stainless steel line around the edge there. Then I'll go ahead and remove any debris that might be on there so that way my vinyl has a nice smooth surface to stick to. Now for my finishing touches, I'm just gonna be using this pinstriping. I actually had quite a bit of this left from an, a project I did last year with you guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use up the rest of this. It's just very pretty champagne glitter vinyl. And I'm just gonna add that pinstriping along every seam that we did for that wood look. I also came through and did the bottom and I doubled that up along the bottom. I just really liked the way that looked. Now you could also go ahead and add a decal at this point as well, or just let your art speak for itself. Either way, I know you guys got this. All that's left to do now is add its last two finishing coats of epoxy and she is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.